Uh, we'll call the meet the select board meeting in person meeting to order. This meeting is also um, available accessible virtually. The virtual uh, meeting um, links are included. This on meeting is being recorded. The virtual meeting links are included on the meeting notice that was posted in, in advance of the meeting. And in accordance with the open meeting law, the board states for the record that this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM. NORCAM, it is also being recorded by the town via Zoom, and it may be recorded by other local media. So if we could please rise, and uh, we're gonna state the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And our first order of business is public comment. <coughs> if there is anyone that would like to make any public comment, please um, chat. I guess uh, put raise your hand, wave your hand. No, I'm not seeing it, Madam Chair. Okay, great. So we're going to move on to our next order of business, which is actually. Um, Oh. Joe's quick mark change of manager yep. and DBA and I did notice the applicant's counsel which is attorney Barnowski was joining us virtually so by the uh, Mr. Mr. Gilbert he is present virtually but Mr. Gilbert did you want to speak to that agenda item please certainly thank you madam chair through you um, so uh, we um, are recommending to the board that we continue consideration of these two agenda items to the next regular meeting, which will be Monday, November 22nd, um, so that we can continue a review of the uh, application for change of manager. Okay. And that that has been relayed, I believe, to um, the attorney and through the attorney to the, uh, the applicant. Okay. And are we going to republish the, me the, me the meeting notice? We, the we wouldn't file? generally, but, we, but um, we will, I believe, for the DBA, a uh, republication would be a, a good courtesy for us to do. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, Madam Chair, a motion to continue consideration of both items regarding Joe's quick mark to November 22nd. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Mr. O'Leary, discussion. Uh, the attorney who represents the entity here in agreement? Attorney Barnowski, are you... Can he you just unmuted. We know you're virtual. Hi, good evening, members of the board. Yes, uh, for the record, Adam Barnowski on, on behalf of the, the applicant. I was just checking in uh, just to see if there were any other questions, but, but we're, we are fine with uh, answering a few questions the board has and then coming back before you in a few weeks. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Vincenzo? at 7.30 p.m. All right, so again, the motion is to continue the public hearing on the um, change of manager and change of doing business as for Quick Mark 231 Main Street. Motion has been made by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. One more hand, Ma Madam Chair, to clarify, it's not a public hearing. It's to continue consideration of the matter. Until 7.30. I'll see in my agenda packet it said public hearing. The next item is a, is a hearing, Madam Chair. It says public hearing. No, not the updated one from up there. Well, I'm looking <laughs> at my packet, and we'll be continuing it in, in next meeting. Motion, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Now let's move on to the 745 public hearing on the change of stock interest of Shiny Cuisine, Inc., 235 Main Street. I see the applicants here. If you could come to the table where the microphone is, please state your names and addresses for the record. And you're representing yourself on the application? Yes. Okay, if you could please, it's hard to hear, so if you could please state your name and address. Hi, my name is Mei Hui. I am manager of China Cuisine, and I'm here for the proof of change of stock to Jennifer Hui and Benjamin Hui. Uh, the address is 235 Main Street, North Reading, Massachusetts. Okay. Yeah. You want to identify you? 
on the application as well? Uh, yeah, um, my name is Victor Hui Michiui. Yeah, I'm husband of May. She's the manager of China Consumer Inc. at 235 Main Street in Albrecht. And you can, do you have anyone here or are you representing yourselves on this? We're representing ourselves. Okay, and is the individual to whom the transfer is being made here with you? No. Or joining us virtually? Okay, so why don't you give us some information on your application? Madam Chair. Yes. Oh, Mr. Gilberto? Through you, there is a hearing notice for this, uh, this oh, item as required. I'm, so, I'm it's, sorry. It's okay, it's page 42. And I, I did you. see where you saw it. It said it for the last item, and I apologize for that yeah. <laughs> mistake. Thank you. All right, let me just, I'm sorry. Let me, before we, before we hear you on the application, let me just read the hearing notice. I'm sorry, Mr. Gilberto. That was my error. All right. In accordance with Chapter 138 of the Massachusetts General Laws, a public hearing will be held by the Select Board on Monday, November 1st, 2021 at 7.45 p.m. on the application of China Cuisine, Inc. for a change of stock interest for the Common Victualler All Alcohol License, which is exercised at 235 Main Street, North Reading, Massachusetts, in a one-story building of approximately 4,000 square feet with kitchen, dining room, and restaurants. This hearing is anticipated to be held in person in room 14 of Town Hall, located at 235 North Street, North Reading, Massachusetts, and via virtual technology as follows, and the publication lists the Zoom link, telephone link, dial by location, meeting ID, um, and uh, this is by the Select Board, published October 21st, 2021. Okay. so. You could just tell us about the application. Yeah, the, um, the application is to uh, transfer some of the stock ownership to our children. Uh, Jennifer Hui is our uh, daughter, and Benjamin Hui is our son. Right now, um, at th this time, like uh, May, my wife, she owns like 50% of the company. And which we have like 100 shares outstanding. So basically, she owns 50 shares, and I own, uh, own 50 shares also. And um, right now, we you know, ask you know, your approval, the celebrity approval, to transfer like uh, to our children, like 20 shares to Jennifer Hoy from, uh, from May and 20 shares uh, from my 50 shares to uh, Benjamin Hui, our son. Okay. <coughs> so, do we have any questions of the applicants? None whatsoever. No. Very good. Very, I'm just happy that you're, you're still here. You survived the pandemic. You fed the community well. And, uh, Always. And it's nice to see that you <laughs> continue to share with, with your son and your daughter. So, I have no problem at all. All right, and all the certificates that are required appear to be in order, Mr. Gilberto, and there's no other issues, there's no disciplinary issues or anything with this, anything that's been noted here. It looks like all the, all the, those certificates are current in the packet. Yes, that's correct, Madam Chair. All right, so do we have a motion? Madam oh, Chair. I'm sorry, Mr. Gilberto. I, I did have one question, and it's more sorry. just to, to affirm through you um, to, um, to the applicants, um, so it, it looks like the restaurant will continue to be operated by your family, um, a combination of yourselves and your children? Yes, at this time, yes. Is, is there any third party that is going to be involved or is projected to be involved um, in operating the restaurant? No, at this time it's not. But um, actually, you know, maybe I can review that as a potential that we are looking for partner to involve in the near future. But, uh, but not at this time, yes. Okay. Thank you. All right, so the manager's gonna remain the same, which is you. Right. Yes. Okay. All right, so do any more questions? All right, do we have a motion? Madam Chair, oh. I move to public. Oh, public? Oh, I, you're right. Okay. 
<laughs> You're right. We're going to move to the uh, we're going to move to the public comment portion of this hearing. Is there anyone here or joining us virtually that wis wishes to speak in favor of this application? I see none. Is there anyone here in person or joining us virtually that wishes to speak in opposition to this application? I see none. Seeing and hearing none, we'll close that portion <coughs> of the meeting and now move to a vote. Madam, we have a motion. Madam Chair, I move to approve a change of stock interest for a common particular all alcohol beverage license for China Cuisine Inc. 235 Main Street, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. Have a good night. You too. All right, our next order of business is to review the 2020 audit with our auditor, Mr. Hingston. He's here. Come on up. Join us. Please right. introduce yourself in the microphone. Tell us what the findings are. All right. <laughs> Madam Chair, through you, I will just note for the public that the finance director is participating in tonight's conversation. Yes. Uh, Ms. Rourke is um, here uh, virtually. Should I keep my mask on? Is that can you hear me okay if I start? Uh, the custom has been to, Madam Chair, to allow the speaker to lower their mask if they'd like. Okay. I didn't know that. I'm I sorry, I should have made that, that clear. <laughs> <laughs> but I talk very loudly, so. I'm, I'm fine. I, I can do it either way. So. No, it's good. better to hear you without the mask on. We'll see. <laughs> no. Um, well, thank you for letting us do the audit again. I'll be brief because there's really no material weaknesses, significant deficiencies, or anything like that in the management letter this year, or any internal control related matters. It's more hopefully informative about a couple of things. Um, feel free to ask a question or interject a comment at any time. I don't, I don't mind a bit. Uh, the first comment deals with the, um, the significant increase in the town's other post-employment benefits uh, liability. It went up from about $23 million from fiscal year 19 to fiscal year 20. And substantially all of that increase related to the, the change in the discount rate. The discount rate used in, the three, in 2019 was 3.5% and it was 2.21% in, in fiscal year 20. And uh, when the actuary is determining the discount rate, a key component is how much is in the OPEP trust fund. And if there's a significant amount in it, they can use what's called the long-term expected rate of return. And in fiscal year 20, that would have been 6.4% instead of the 2.21. And um, the, the, the long-term rate of return, expected long-term rate of return is a fairly stable rate. It was 6.5 this year, it was probably about 6.6, 6.7. It's always fairly stable over a number of years. But the municipal bond rate, which you're required to use if you don't have a significantly funded OPEP trust, is more volatile. And it went from 3.5% to that 2.21%. If those of you have, have the financial statements with you, uh, if you could turn to page 58, if not, I can explain it. One of the things in the financial statements and in your actuarial reports <coughs> is something called the sensitivity analysis. And when the, when the actuaries are doing their, their valuation of your OPEB liability, which was $99 million, 99.7 this year, they, they it's, have excuse, a, it's on page, It starts on page 92. Oh, thank you. Or 90, 93, <laughs> but. Page one, nine, 153. Oh, I'm, I'm not on the PDF. So we, we are. We're trying to I'm scroll sorry. to it. So it it's would page. help us to just get there before you. Okay. Page 153 for the board. Thank members. you. Thank you. Well, it's a pretty long report. Yeah, it is. The chair. I'm there. <coughs> yeah, let's let everybody. Everybody all set? Yep. 
Yeah. And Mike, if you don't mind, as as just so we can just if you could facilitate where we're going in this, because it's a it's quite a lengthy. Just let us know which one. So go sure. ahead, Mr. Hinsch. I'm sorry. That's okay. Me. No, no. So the actuary is required to do something called a sensitivity analysis on a couple of, of the assumptions that they do. Because when they're doing their, their evaluation, most of the things are, uh, the, to get to the number are, assum are assumptions. There's mortality tables they use, the, how many of your current employees are actually going to take the benefit, the discount rate and health care trend rates. And so each one of those, as they change, it affects what the OPEP liability would be. So if you look at the, this, at the sensitivity analysis for the discount rate, at 2.21% is $99,712,000. If you had a 1% better discount rate, it, it goes down to $82 million. So that's a $17 million swing. And although it doesn't work quite like this, you had, because you can't use the expected long-term rate of return, which is about four percentage points higher, if you, if you multiply the 17 by 4%, it would be you know, $68 million, million less. So a funded time, um, OPEP trust means a big number change in your OPEP liability, a significantly funded one. There's also, just to show you, it's 99 million. If you did 1% better on that, it's $17 million better. And also, if you did 1% better on the healthcare trend rate than what they're projecting, they're projecting it's going to be 8% increase for the first year and then going up 3.9%. So if it only went up 7% and down to 2.9, it would be $20 million better. So just those two things alone, a 1% change in two of the assumptions means a $37 million change in that liability. So it's not that this is a, you know, a shot in the dark line, that they're taking, they're taking all these assumptions they're using are according to standards, but, it, but you need a crystal ball to know what the discount rate is going to be going out for 30 years or, or the health care trend rates for 30 years. So they have to disclose this thing. So my recommendation is, is to talk to your actuary um, almost every year and find out where, where you need to be in order to get to be able to use the, the long-term expected rate of return instead of the um, municipal bond rate. It's, it's, it's probably going to be a large number. So I would say that if you can get that number from, from the actuary and, and try to make a goal to get to, a, to that number in five to ten years, it'll, it'll make a be much better um, position on your balance sheet and, and, help, fund, and help fund it uh, at the same time. So it'll make you look a lot better to the art investors, bond, bond rating agencies. Just, just, just in relation to what, what have you what have you seen? You know, it's from a percentage standpoint. You know, wh wh where's the sweet spot that well that you think is? I, 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 there's, there's actually something called a blended rate. So if you're, while you're working your way up to it, if they say say said you need 10 million, you have you have say 2 million in. It. Say say she the, the actuary says you need 10 million to get to the use the expected long term rate of return, which will be around six and a half percent. That's that's a fair number. That's up there. Um, if you get, as you're working your way up, they'll let you do a blended rate. So that if you're not quite there, they'll do a blended rate between up to 6.54 and whatever the municipal bond rate is at the time. So I do have some places that are funded enough, that are funded enough that um, can use the 6.54 um, for, for going up for the whole time. So their liabilities are much, much smaller. So, and as far as our approach at this particular point in time, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Gilberto, you know, we're putting $300,000, $350,000 a year, um, and I think the term we used a few years back was, you know, let's stop the bleeding. You know, we, we, we can't probably, we can probably never catch up, yeah. per se. So right. let's stop the bleeding, pay our liabilities going forward, and at some point, that portion, which is a, an outstanding liability, is going to retreat as people retire. And, and fall off the rolls, yeah. so to speak. Yes, uh, you know, uh, uh, but at that rate, it would be, you know, you'd be quite a, quite a ways out. But one of the things some people are putting into their OPEP plan and, and bond rating agencies are liking it is 
Um, the retirement system will be funded in 2032. And if you put into your OPEB plan that you're going to take, because it'll fall off a cliff, your liability, I mean, your assessment will fall off a cliff when it's fully funded. And um, if you say that we're going to take X percentage of that and, and put that into the OPEB trust, that helps them determine how much will be in the trust going forward. So it, it helps the actuary and it helps the bond rating agents, it helps them get you to a more blended rate, too. So. So it's not an easy it's not an easy decision what to, whether to put more money into that because it means less money for other periods. So, um, but it, it in the long term it could mean bond rating, to which could save you money on interest. So it's a it's a it's a a lot of consideration to be done, and I think it starts with asking your actuary what the number is, and 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 then the, the issue is it's like if she said. Uh, the current actuary said it's $10 million. Well, that's $10 million based on this valuation. Based on the next valuation, if you did not, or if you did better, then if, if, if they had like a 2.21% discount rate and you earned 7%, that might go down, that, that what you need in the, in the fund, because just because of it, the changing circumstances. So it's not a number that's just always there, just like the liability isn't a number that never changes. And as far as the change, Madam Chair, and as far as the change that took place in regard to the discount rate, who changed that? It, who, it, you know, it's, it, it's, it's the feds. It's the, it's the municipal bond rate. That, that's just, that, it's like, well, not the feds, it's just that's the municipal bond rate. What, yeah. it, it changes every, you know, every month, and what you have to use is what the June 30th municipal bond rate okay. is. Right. So. It just happened to be a, a, a very down, down year on it. So and next year, it will pop back up to 2.5. In fact, that's why it will be a volatile number, as long as you're tied to that municipal bond rate. Okay. So any other questions at this point? Mr. Struda? No. I mean, that's really the only comment for this year. The, the, the rest of it is just has to do with the prior year. Um, prior comments. And the first prior one is um, had to do with the bills and warrants of payment. Uh, and that comment really had two parts. The first part was just letting you know that you could have uh, designate one member of the board to approve the warrant uh, and, and the bills. But the second part was to remind you that the actual review of the invoices is an important uh, element of the internal control structure. Currently, the bills are reviewed. Every invoice is reviewed by the accounting's office. Uh, but the selectman's approval of the warrant and authorization is the check of the invoices, is the checks and balance on them. So we, we, I don't think that part has been implemented yet, but we still think it's an important element. And, and the reason is because there has been some fraud in, in recent years at that level. And the only way that that, 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 that the fraud that was perpetrated at that level would have been caught is by somebody above that level. And so it was somebody at the second highest, in the places that uh, I know of, it was at the places at the second highest level in the internal control st structure um, perpetrated the fraud. So there was nobody except the board review above them to, to, to have caught that fraud. So. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, through you. Uh, so this is something that we've had quite a bit of discussion about since it was identified uh, a year ago. Um, and you know, one of the things that we are looking at is a potential alteration in the purchasing process to, to move um, some of the smaller purchase order item review that occurs, which often is very time consuming and delayed, to be candid, <laughs> if you haven't heard that from <laughs> employees, and I'm laughing because you all have heard that, um, in, in, uh, I'm sure, over the years, um, to try to open an avenue where we can more closely associate the invoices with the payments through, um, through our, 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 uh, our um, accounting system. So that's something that we're, we're looking at. Um, it, it may be a pretty complex thing for us to do, but it, based on that recommendation, I think it's something that may be worthwhile um, so that you know, when you're looking or when I'm looking at the payments, I'm able to link right to an invoice, which yeah. is the recommendation that was provided 
um, and, and review it and sort of put, shift my time in the review away from the smaller front end where it's really a purchase order but not a payment more towards assisting you in reviewing at the time of payment. That's a, that's a, I think that that's a great idea and I will say that right now all of my stuff is going into wasteland. I don't know where it's going but I do know at least three of our members signed but I also know that in the times when I do receive it, the few times that I have questions, Liz will Liz will answer right away. Yes. What is this for? I don't understand this charge. But when we, by the time we get it, it's pages and pages and pages of, you know, stuff that you we regularly see. So that would be, I think, a lot put upon the board to to figure out. That looks like a strange charge. What is that? So that would be great. Just so. But again, the times that I've said, wait, wait a minute, what is this? This doesn't make any sense. Stuff that I don't recognize, I get an answer instantly from, from Liz to explain what it is, you know? Yes. Uh, did, what, any other questions on that? No, Mr. O'Leary, you're all set? Nope. Okay. Um, the last co co prior year comment just had to do with the tax foreclosures. This was a recommendation just to look at the tax foreclosure list. Generally, those the parcels on that are, are land of low value or, or um, land locked lands that have just been, been let go. But occasionally, there's properties on there that could be sold and, and, and put back into the tax roll. So we just recommended that you, know, you look at that periodically and try to get anything that could possibly be out of the foreclosure and back onto the t uh, tax rolls. And that was implemented last year. Any other questions? No. All right. I was just going to jump real quick to a couple of things sure. about the financials. Um, I'm not going to get into it. I'd be happy to answer any questions on it, but you had a clean opinion letter. It's called an unmodified opinion. And, and that's the first thing that your bond rating agencies look at. And you have, there's two reports on here, one for the federal grants and one for the rest of the town on uh, reports on internal control in our compliance with laws and regulations, and both of those were clean. There were no findings on any of those. You had a real good year. Your free cash was very strong this year. You still have that $19 million five in, in the land sale account, which is very helpful to your financial position. And also, it helps your earnings on investments by a significant amount. So um, I think that's really good. So that's all I really have, and I'm happy to answer any questions. But one, before I do, I'd like to thank the town for uh, letting me do the audit for all these years. Uh, I've retired from the audit business. This is my last uh, official exit conference, and it's kind of fitting for me because this was one of my first clients. And, oh. and so I want to thank you guys and Pride Boards for the confidence and the trust they placed in me all these years. And, uh, I think Steve O'Leary is the only one that's been around for all of them. <laughs> I, I was going to say, how many years has it been? You must have been 15 when you started, right? <laughs> uh, how many years has it been, Dick? You know, I was thinking about it today. I did it with the state before I left the state, and I left the state in uh, 84. So, uh, and then probably a couple of years after that, I was city audit in Salem for a few years. So probably 87, 88, wow. 88, so maybe I started doing the audit here. Yeah. I think we started together here. Yeah. <laughs> what, was, what was your first year? My first year here was 88. Was it? Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. But, um, Miss nice. Yeah. Miss Just, uh, but congratulations on your retirement. Thank you. Uh, thank you for all of your candor over the years and um, straight shooting and letting us know where we stood. And uh, you've been a perfect service for us. It's been greatly appreciated by me personally. And uh, I wish you nothing but a good, long, healthy retirement. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Gilberto, did you have anything else to add? I did. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the year that Mr. Hingston was auditing is actually fiscal year 2020, so the year ending um, a year and a few months ago, um, which was a very challenging year to review because, as those of you on the financial planning team know, there was quite a bit of money moving around at the end of that fiscal year due to the pandemic. So we had CARES Act funding, we had a variety of smaller state public health grants that were coming in. I think we had a computer related grant that came in. And so that, there was a lot of work that had to go into reconcile to the bottom line. And, and Dick 
um, and the finance director both worked overtime, um, literally overtime, <laughs> to, uh, to get it completed. I, I just want to, I, I know what happens in the background and I, I know it's sort of what has to happen, but I want to recognize Dick for that effort for this year and the finance director as well for that effort. Uh, and also, you know, again, I, I've, I've been you know, working alongside you for seven years and I, I want to thank you not just for, you know, your willingness to kind of guide us along the way and, and you know, point us in the right direction. You've always been willing to look at an issue when we've said, hey, we're not so sure what to do with this. What do you think? Whether it's during the audit or outside the audit as well. And there's probably a dozen times in, in my seven years where you sort of helped us find our way through something. And I just want to thank you for that as well. well and I'll, I'll echo Mr. O'Leary's comments. I wish you a healthy retirement. Thank you. And be kind to your finance people this year. It was, it was, it's been a tough year for them. <laughs> Mr. Hankston, what does an auditor do in retirement? What are you doing? Is someone in the cap he was a You know what? I, I'm, I'm doing, I'm working like a couple of days a week at some of my small little clients. Nothing, no audits, nothing big, but um, it's come, I'm, that's seasonal. So come December, I'm not going to have anything to do. So I'll let you know that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's travel. That's what I hope. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. Good. Well, best wishes for you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations, Dick. Thanks, Thanks Dick. Thank you. Okay, our next order of business is a vote to approve the useful life for capital items. Turn that to Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, briefly, these are two items that have been approved for acquisition uh, by town meeting, uh, I believe at our June 2021 town meeting. They are items for which our overall capital and financial plan calls for us to borrow to make the purchases. And our um, borrowing plan factors a borrowing term, a, pay, a payback term of a longer period of time than is identified for in state statute. State law uh, allows for that to occur um, by authorization of a vote of the select board. So in this case, the items are both, I believe, able to be borrowed for a five-year period. We are seeking to borrow for a 10-year period in accordance with the plan that the Capital Improvement Planning Committee recommended. To give you some assurance, um, the pickup truck that we're talking about, we generally keep those trucks for 12 to 13 years, so longer than the useful life that you're being asked to vote. And in the case of the Bobcat, the other item, um, our last Bobcat lasted approximately 15 years. So um, I stand here today confident that this is the right step in addition to be fulfilling our, uh, our overall financial plan for capital for this uh, current fiscal year. And questions? I believe we prepared a motion. Sorry. Any questions? Do we have a motion? <laughs> Madam Chair, I move that the maximum useful life of the departmental equipment listed below to be financed with a portion of the proceeds of the 185000 borrowing authorized by the vote of the town passed June 5, 2021. Article 21 is hereby determined pursuant to GLC 44 to be as follows. Departmental Equipment, 95,000, maximum useful life 10 years. Departmental equipment, 90,000, maximum useful life 10 years. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Next order of business is the investment policy. It's our second reading and adoption of the investment policy. We had the first reading where we actually waived the reading and voted to waive the reading where we had the first reading last week. And is there any further input or discussion? Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just to follow up, I, first I want to recognize um, uh, members of the trustees and trust funds who are here, um, Mr. Kaufman, uh, Ms. Osborne, and Ms. McGoldrick, uh, they're here virtually. I appreciate them joining us again this evening. Um, I have not received any further comment other than an inquiry from you, Madam Chair, with regard to any opinion that the auditor might have on the policy. I did speak with him about that mm -hmm. question. Um, his, uh, his role is largely, uh, or, or the, the auditor's role, would largely be to monitor the investments. Um, that's more than likely where um, the, the auditor would weigh in to, to make sure that those investments are aligned with the policy. Um, so that was the response that he provided us, and I'm confident that that would be the case moving forward. Okay. Um, not just for this group, but should we elect to expand this policy to include all of the town's investments, um, that that would be the case as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for answering that, Mr. Gilberto. Any other comments or questions? No. We're all set to move forward? All right. Do we have a motion? 
Madam Chair, I move to approve the second reading and adoption of the Trustees of Trust Funds Policy and to waive the reading of the entire policy. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous? Okay. Madam Chair, through you to the trustees, thank you thank so you much. Thank you for joining us <laughs> in the work on this policy as well. All right, the next order of business, we have on the agenda the vote to ratify the NRAS memorandum. We're going to uh, table that. Yeah. Do we need a motion to table no, or do we just not. skip it? All right, so we're going to move on to the next order of business, which is Mr. Gilberto Town Administrator's report. Thank you, Madam Chair, if you could bear with me for one moment. Sure. While I uh, Somebody want to pinch me? We, we must have got to it's it. It's not a yeah, Get out to the board member report. He was, he was <laughs> expecting to get snapped at 9.30, 10 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Chair, through you, thank you. Um, first, I attached for the board a uh, listing of projects that I provided at the request of Senator Bruce Tarr and Representative Brad Jones in anticipation of possible funding opportunities in the coming weeks and months. Uh, these would be funding opportunities at the state level. The list reflects unfunded capital projects, other projects that are in the planning stages, and select operating budget items that have also not been funded. Um, I've spoken with the superintendent of schools. He provided some capital items, and he may also provide additional non-capital items to be added to the list. Um, it was an extensive list. I think you saw it, um, and um, we, we sort of were looking to keep the conversation really broad, dependent upon the funding source that might show up. Um, one such funding source, for those who are not aware, was a bill um, to spend uh, surplus and I believe a portion of ARPA funding at the state level uh, approved last week. Uh, Representative Jones uh, has informed me that he um, has uh, in, uh, was able to secure funding for $100,000 for our turf field replacement process uh, pro project, as well as $100,000 for improvements to Hipsters River Park. Um, those considerations will then be taken up in the Senate, which I believe is going to be taking up this, uh, th their version of this bill later this week, and we will await and see what uh, gets signed into law. So um, our efforts to try to gather this, and I want to recognize the superintendent of schools, the assistant superintendent, and the finance director for scrambling to put this together and so that we can have as extensive a list as possible. And uh, we look forward to, to more opportunity, too, uh, working with the state in, um, in the coming, uh, coming months as we all, all, I think, are very familiar with the resources that are now available at the state level. Um, I'm pleased to report that the Senior Center has resumed the in-person programming, uh, a, a chair dancing program started up uh, earlier in the month of October, and a weekly congregate lunch program is scheduled to begin this Wednesday, November 3rd. I'd also ask folks as they enter the building, please take note of the new stairs, uh, which were completed in September. Um, they came out really nice, um, which is uh, uh, really uh, good to see. Um, we have, a, for those who don't know, we do have a siding and painting project that was funded in the fiscal year 2022 capital project that will also put additional attention into that building. Related to that, uh, we have an ongoing siding and painting project at the Flint Memorial Library building. Um, and uh, while we have made a lot of progress, we are encountering a significant uh, amount of deterioration in the siding. So the DPW director will be over with the chair of the Historic District Commission to look at that, uh, I believe, tomorrow and further understand what the extent might be, what our options are, and that uh, we may also seek to involve the architect from our um, facilities master plan as well, just to determine what the right next steps will be for us on that very important restoration project. So there'll be more to come on that. Um, we have two appropriations, you may recall, the original one from two years ago and then a second one that we did in the fall of last year. So we do have resources. Um, with, with regard to how to address it, but it, it may become an issue of the procurement and how we procure those resources as well as the timing as we come to the end of this construction season. So um, more to come on that, but I do want to make the board aware that we're certainly looking into that. Um, I received a, a letter asking me to sign on to a letter um, addressing a net zero stretch code. Um, as I wrote to the board, I did not intend to sign on to this as a matter of policy, but I wanted to forward it along to the board. For, the, for its uh, consideration, I put it into my, uh, my report. Um, I'm pleased to inform the board uh, and the public of transition that's occurred within the town hall, and I may have mentioned this two meetings ago, um, but our uh, Board of Health Administrative Assistant, Stephanie Conley, has moved 
uh, from the health department to the town clerk's office. And uh, Chrissy Doolin, who was in the Conservation Commission office, has moved over to the health department office. I want to thank both of these hardworking women for their continued service to the town of North Reading. Um, additionally, and this was not in my, uh, my written report, but I think you are all aware that we are pleased to have been awarded the Youth Substance Abuse Grant from the federal government. Um, that's uh, certainly great news for us to be able to continue that program for what we believe will be another five years. It's a, it's a reflection of a quite a bit of effort on the part of many folks, full and part-time <coughs> employees, full and part-time volunteers. <laughs> um, to, uh, to get us through the, to that process, and I want to uh, specifically recognize Amy Luckowitz for her, for her efforts um, on that. And I believe that that concludes my report, Madam Chair. Right, thank you. Questions for the TA? No. All right, let's do board members. Mr. O'Leary. Um, again, uh, Wastewater Subcommittee. Just uh, Studo and myself and the town administrator and the rest of the team. Again, Meeting regularly now, the town meeting has taken favorable action, and um, we can anticipate you'll be getting lots of updates over the next few months in relation to uh, where we're at um, in relation to the wastewater uh, project. So we'll we'll keep you abreast of that. Again, Board of Health again will be meeting um, on the 18th at 7 p.m. to again to continue to monitor. So they do continue to monitor um, positivity rates along with. Um, everything else that has to do with the pandemic, and still continuing to do the normal activities that are required of them uh, statutorily. Uh, other than that, I think uh, pretty well said. I just would like to mention uh, the fact that last Thursday evening, was it? Mr. Was Wal Mr. Walner did a fantastic job, um, all by himself, unfortunately, but, <laughs> uh, but fortunately for everybody that was there and those that who were attending virtually on, on I won't steal his thunder. Uh, he gave a tremendous report um, showing a tremendous amount of uh, effort that was put into uh, the subject matter and um, outlined a vision for, for our community that I think we should be embracing as a board. And I'm sure he's going to be broaching the subject with us um, in short order. So, but again, I, Mr. Studo was present too, and um, I was just favorably impressed with. The presentation, the thoughtfulness, the uh, in-depth uh, statistics and analytics that took place in figuring out what's going on in our community and what we have to look forward to going forward. So we have some action to take, and uh, I look forward to assisting him and my colleagues here to address the future of our community. All set. Thank Thanks, you. Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Walner. Oh, excuse me. Raising, raising your hand there. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I, I don't mean to interrupt, but uh, Mr. O'Leary has reminded me. So um, I have signed an engineering contract with Wright Pierce for the next phase, which was funded um, at the October town meeting. It's a $2.4 million contract, a couple hundred thousand dollars less than we were projecting. Um, you know, we, we feel that we're in a good spot with the appropriation, and um, I want to recognize the effort to try to really keep that moving. Uh, particularly Mr. Parisi to stay on top, right on top of me to make sure I signed it as quickly as possible. <laughs> um, and I, I also want to add, and I know it's something that has come up um, in previous meetings, um, and I, I could feel myself not remembering to say it a moment ago, um, but um, I've mentioned, you know, we've gone through and we've completed the study with regard to the four intersections, and our intention is to invite the consulting engineers to the first meeting in December to review the recommendations that they've offered. I will point out for the public, in some of the locations, there are short-term short recommendations relative to signage that the DPW is going to be proceeding with this fall. Um, the longer-term you know, issues of realignment or signals, that we will consider you know, after we get feedback from the select board at that meeting. Will we get, so, a, will we get a preview of that? You'll, you'll, have, you'll have a presentation, and I'll get you the link through Dropbox to get the whole study as well. You'll have plenty of time to review it. Hopefully central and uh, central. Yeah. yeah. That's yes. extremely dangerous. Each end. Yeah, I believe there were recommendations for three of the, the four intersections, at least, including Central yeah. Park. Very dangerous. All right. Mr. Walner. Right. Thank you, Madam Thank Chair. you. No, Thank that's, you. that's a great question. No, 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 no. That's a good supplement to the report. So, yeah, last Thursday night we did, uh, I did present for the, uh, on behalf of the ad hoc uh, H-Friendly team, which was Jennifer Ford, Catherine McKay Scott, Kim Manzelli, who uh, has not been able to continue, but certainly was supporting it and myself. 
And uh, we had in the audience maybe 40 people, I would say. And then I'm not sure, Michael, at some point, if I, if, I know we had a recording, if I could see how many attended there would be great. Um, sure, yeah, I believe there were 18 that, that attended. 18. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I know you've asked for the recording, I just I need yeah, to get it. Yeah, we're trying to get that all together. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure, I knew you couldn't make I it. I was working, yeah. Yeah, so it's, uh, Norcam is gonna be editing, I think by tomorrow. And we'll have that available so you can watch it through. Unfortunately, it is an hour and a half of listening to me. My <laughs> featured, my featured speaker, because of the storm, she lives in situate, wasn't able to get there, so ended up doing all the talking. But I think I knew the data well enough for it was, um, you know, I covered for her because I heard her say it more than enough times. Um, and the feedback was very positive, uh, and I think you, you said it, and I don't have to add more to it. You know, it, was, it really is a strategic view of our future and um, I'd ask for the two board members who weren't there to listen by the strategic planning meeting if you could listen to it. I hate to suck up an hour and a half of your time, but nope. you have to hear the entire hour and a half in order to listen. I have a flight Thursday morning on. Okay, good. <laughs> Trying to figure out how to get it. I don't know how to do that on the broadcast, but whatever, whatever can happen. So anyways, it was good. Thank you, Michael, because we had a delay getting started technically. Not even the IT person at um, the school knew how to get us going, even though we were thought we were supposed to be able to get going. So Michael jumped in and saved the day for we were only 15 minutes late. So thank you very much, Michael, for doing that. And uh, I think that's it. I'm glad to wrap up a 10 year study. Great. Right. <laughs> yeah. I do want to write our What day is our strategic planning meeting? The Monday. The 15th. No, that was yeah. uh, two Mondays from now. Monday, November 15th. 15th. Yeah, correct. take off. <laughs> And, and yeah. what day is our next select board meeting? Monday, November 22nd, which will okay. also be tax, we expect will be tax classification. I, oh. I, 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 maybe we can bring it at the end, but I, I realize I'm going to be out of town. I never thought it was going to be an issue because I thought we were doing this by Zoom. So I don't mind coming on by Zoom, but I don't know if we can work that out or not. It, for, the, for the strategic plan? No, 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 not that. <laughs> no, 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 the regular. Yeah. The regular old select board meeting, the 22nd. Oh, yeah. Well, because we're if doing it's a hybrid, hybrid like this, yeah. you're fine. I don't know if we can do that. Yes. Yeah, so I, I, I just suddenly realized that. Absolutely. Through you, Madam Chair, we intend to keep the same setup. Um, it is admittedly not perfect, but I'll, I'll dare say it's serviceable. <laughs> so um, we intend to keep it in place. Okay. So yeah, it's great that you're willing to join us. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's, it was a commitment. Yeah. I just thought yeah. we would be on, anyways. Happy All right. We'll make that one quick, that meeting quick. Okay, we'll try. <laughs> <laughs> it won't uh, did you, you, I saw you raise your hand. Yes. So what else did you want to add? Just to, to echo um, and, and thank the superintendent of schools, Patrick Daly. Um, they've been very um, judicious about making the schools available, and I appreciate them sort of using us as a, a test to allow this event to take place and to accommodate the size crowd that we have. I want to thank Patrick for that, and I also want to recognize Allison Kane, who is always in the background carrying us with these events. She came up from a, a, a work she was doing at the Performing Arts Center to help us out. So yeah. I want to thank her for that. Um, it's not my turn, but Allison Kane also was at our town meeting. She was there morning, noon, and night. Long after everyone left, she was breaking down the equipment too. So a, a kind of a pivotal part of us mm -hmm. being able to do the presentations yeah. during these meetings. It was supposed to be a flip your switch thing, and even she went there and goes, somebody changed everything. So she oh. had to like rewire on the fly. So she's like, oh. I don't know what happened either. So she was doing a lot of uh, jury rigging to get mm -hmm. it. So we were delayed by 15 minutes, but it was no big deal at the end of the day. But um, we made Good. it through. So Great. glad to have it done. All right, Mr. Studo, off to you. That's it? Wow. This is going to sound Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Did you want to add anything, Mr. Oh, no, no. Add. <laughs> <laughs> this is board member reports, not TA. He had his turn. Mrs. <laughs> um, yes, and just um, during a financial uh, planning meeting, it, your presentation was talked about and how well it went, it went over. So, um, youth services. Um, Superintendent Daly joined in and gave us a great overview of how everything's working at the schools. Um, um, just, you know, giving us an update on all of that. Um, Jen Ford went over fall programs. Um, one of them that caught my attention is they are going to be FaceTiming with Santa early in December. Um, they don't have everything worked out yet, but um, watch for that. Um, and of course, veterans um, 
events committee. We've been working hard, getting ready for the um, veterans dinner, which is Thursday, November 11th from 5 to 9 at the Tewksbury Country Club. If you haven't gotten your tickets yet, you might want to get them. Um, and also talking about the proclamation and Sue Magner's working really hard on getting things done for November. Um, she has some great ideas. She has businesses doing discounts for veterans. Ginger Gourmet is gonna do 15% discounts in November. Um, she's having veterans come in and read a book uh, about veterans at the K through three at the schools. Um, and she's asking for any veterans in town to send pictures. She wants to put them on the bulletin board and she is gonna have them put in the transcript also. So those are things she's working on. And that's great. That's what I have. That's excellent. All right. And let's see if I get more at all. Anything to say? Did you want to, I'm sorry, Madam Chair, do you want to speak to the, uh, the daytime observance as well? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, because <laughs> I can't make that one, so it went out of my head. Um, yeah, there are daytime observances also on Veterans Day at the Monument, um, uh, 11 o'clock, um, and I think that's it, right? Uh, do we still need speakers for that? Um, Has anybody? I, I believe, um, yeah. Matthew, Madam Chair, she was asking if uh, a board member could speak um, at the program, and I know at least uh, one or two of you are going to be at the dinner. Yes. Um, as well, but if we could just uh, at some point designate who will speak at the daytime at the day, yeah. Is anyone available to attend that? What time? Speak at? Eleven. It's at eleven. Eleven o'clock. And this is a proclamation. Just to read the yeah the proclamation. I can do that. Yeah. yeah. That's, That's fantastic. That'd be wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Eleven o'clock right. at the moment. At, mm -hmm. at the morning. monument. Yeah. Yeah. Because Sue wanted to do the program and just at least put the you know board member who'd be in attendance. Yeah. Rich, if that. you could. I, I can let her know, or unless you just want to let her know that you'll do that. Why don't you let Huh? Do you want to tell her? I can tell her. Yeah, if you could. That'd be sure. Great. Yeah, yeah. That'd be great. Just send me whatever information. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I, I did want to just comment on, you know, Veterans Day, November 11th. It's the day to remember living veterans and those who lost their lives in service to our country. And um, just to even if you can join for those services that Mrs. Gonzalez just mentioned or do, you know, something else to, to remember veterans for the day or, you know, do something helpful. And we do have, we have proclaimed the whole month Veterans Month, so um, don't just do the day, do something, you know, do more than one thing, hopefully, during the month. Um, the, just a quick, quick update to um, the the board members on the, the um, master planning facilities meeting. So we had the kind of the first rollout with the architect, HKT architects on what their plan is or what the, what the buildings they're gonna focus in on. And they kind of zoned, zoned in on five, which is Town Hall, um, Damon Tavern, and uh, the third meeting house. Um, the fire station build out of the fire station the intergenerational and the intergenerational center right those are the one two three four five five buildings that they're zoned in on and trying to come up with the plan on you know moving forward designing cost giving us some sense of those that they determined would be the priorities for us so that's starting, starting to move forward again, which is great. At post, not really post COVID, but coming out of COVID where everything was at a standstill. So um, that that's about it for that's about it for my reports. But it was a good meeting, Mr. Oh, here. Are they going to be looking at any other facilities at all, even peripherally, such as the Hillview facility? The Hillview, the Hillview came up in the discussion. Um, because of the location of the intergenerational center and the potential for restrictions or conditions on the land on which it's being proposed. So 
that segued into a, a brief discussion about how that's just too much for them to try to tackle in terms of what they're doing for the town. But I do think that it, it's important for us at our strategic planning meeting to come up with, you know, just to, to talk about it at our meeting in terms of a vision of the Hillview moving forward. And, you know, I think it's important, of course, for consideration of the location of the intergenerational center, but it's basically an empty function facility and a, not an unopened tavern while the golf golf over there is extremely busy all the time. So it's a resource that's not generating revenue for us and it should be. So I think there was a, a lot of input with regard to um, the land, not necessarily the Hillview, but they did briefly talk about it and there was a little bit of chatter about it, but it's not one that they're going to focus in on for us. It's too compli complicated, I think, for them to focus in on it. And Mr. Gilbert, you can add anything you want to that, but it, my understanding is they felt that that was just something too complicated to sort out for the purpose of their study for the town. That's correct, Madam Chair. It's not a focus, but it is a building that we um, have sort of insisted that they keep in the discussion because of this transition that, it, that it's in. So I'm not expecting that they're going, they are not going to be doing the extensive review of systems, for example, that they would be doing at the fire department or, or um, in um, the, uh, the other municipal buildings. But they, they, they're aware that there's sort of this unanswered question from a programmatic standpoint of, okay, what are we going to do with the building moving forward? And that's the extent that they're going to be looking at it from my understanding. Okay, so, so it's not going to be ignored? No, no. Okay, maybe I misunderstood because again, to me, I'm looking at a facility, facilities master plan. Mm -hmm. um, you can't exclude a major asset here, which, uh, you know, for, for years was kind of paying its own way. Uh, but again, times have changed. Uh, needs may change. And we have this historic, part of it, a historic type building, but uh, a facility that, you know, uh, commission is, is looking for some guidance or ideas as to what we may see how it may fit you know into a master plan in use of it uh, if funds are going to be targeted towards it it's going to be targeted appropriately as opposed to you know, reacting to just a request for a proposal or something like that so okay. it, to me it's, it's a major facility that the town owns that needs to be included somehow or another so they really, they really, they really weren't zoned in on that. They zoned in on these particular, you know, in the next couple of months, they, they gave us a chart of, you know, what tasks they expect to do, but those were only related to these five buildings. Mr. Gilbert. In, in, in line with that, so there are seven tasks in the scope of work that we um, have worked out with them. Um, the final plan and final master plan report is the seventh task and it refer I'm just reading directly from the scope. In addition, we will comment on the Hillview Country Club and outline the problems with its future development. Um, as we stated in the past, it's a separate project in, its, in, its, in it itself in as much as there are so many moving parts, some of which are not under the town's control. So it, it's expected to be in the report, but it, it, it is not a focus. I mean, I think that that's... Uh, I think we need to definitely focus in on as part of our strategic planning meeting. And of course, the Hillview Commission is you know, responsible for the management of that, but I'm sure they are looking for some direction. They're, they're looking for any input and ideas that mm. people may have. Again, generally, the way that they operate is any uh, request for funding from them or from those revenue sources or uses of the facility generally comes through the Land Utilization Committee, you know, gets vetted there, yeah. and then proposed to them rather than circumventing them. Uh, but again, you know, it, it's at a point where, you know, uh, we need to think about it. We yeah. need to think about what we want to do. My understanding is that they have attempted with the exit of the previous function manager, who, as we all know, was not operating the pub. But as he exited, they did put out RFP, but got, you know, very little by way of a response. So 
it, it obviously needs some, you know, fresh set of eyes and some fresh perspective and it, it also needs recruitment, an active recruitment of caterers or restaurateurs or, you know, businesses that might come in there together, separately or what have you. So I think it's something that we, we should brainstorm at least for part of our meeting. We have a lot to, to, to talk about at Strategic Plan, but we should brainstorm and, and, and get them some ideas Absolutely. because it, it should be generating revenue. It should also be a place that we, we should be able to do town events there. We should be able to have, the school should be able to utilize it. And it's basically closed. And I think we all are on the same page and I'm, we know the Hillview Commission's on the same page with it. So. But I think as far as an RFP, it has to be, you have to actively recruit. You have to actively recruit and think outside the box of what could potentially occur there. You know, let, solicit the bids and let people come back. One, both, one or the other, both, partner, what have you. And I think that let the, let the, let the, and make sure you're actively soliciting, targeting specific, you know, Oh, yeah, but we can get into it as far as yeah. what the challenges yeah. are with the location and, and what the primary source of revenue there is and yes. the challenges yeah. associated with trying to run a restaurant or something like that. But we'll get into that at yeah, a later sure. date. Sure, sure. Okay. All right. But definitely, it's, it's got to be discussed on strategic Okay, I just, you know, yeah. it's just in relation to the master plan, I just want to yeah, sure Mr. that Tar it wasn't, was there wasn't too. ignored. Yeah, Mr. Tar was there to kind of give the input on behalf of the commission, but it, it really came up in the context of the land maybe not being available or, or you know, some reticence of locating the intergenerational center at Ipswich River Park like we talked about. So. There's some conditions or restrictions that, you know, we were looking to understand, mm -hmm. you know, what's the hold up here or untangle that for us so that we can understand what it is we have to do to move the, you know, seek authorization from the legislature. What do we need to do to locate the intergenerational center? If we even need to do anything at all, depending on where it's located on that, on the parcel and it was taken by eminent domain by the Hillview Commission. So there was a little bit of red tape that was explained to us by um, Mr. Tarr, so we need to kind of get a little bit more information. Mr. Stack's been um, g given over all that information and you know available to help give us input because he's actually been there from the inception. And I think Mr. Tarr's been around at, on the LUC for a long time as well. So. So I think we just need to untangle that a little bit, but we also need to help with some vision, you know, some planning, some, uh, you know, some vision planning, I guess you could say. So I think our first step would be to do that at strategic plan and then maybe have a meeting with the uh, Hillview or commission and, you know, do some brainstorming together. So. Mm -hmm. um, Can't hurt. Right. Good. Uh, Mr. Gilbert, anything else? Nope. <laughs> All right. Thank you for That's allowing about me to it. Go. Madam Chair, I'm going to adjourn. I'll second that. <laughs> Motion to adjourn by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. <laughs>